This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. This is a pretty depressing question I got. <laughs> so, no, luckily, <laughs> climate change. <laughs> So luckily, climate change uh, will not kill all the forests in California, but uh, we do expect it to cause quite a few changes um, as we move forward over the coming century and longer. So the most certain change for climate change in California is higher temperatures, and I'm sure you're all uh, familiar with pictures like this that show the increasing temperatures in expected over the next 100 years or so. So this shows about a five degree Fahrenheit increase in Berkeley, and as you move inland into those redder areas, we're expecting larger temperature changes. The project projections from global climate models for precipitation change are relatively small, and they're pretty uncertain. But what we do know is that with warmer temperatures and no increase in precipitation, we expect the summers to be drier. And this is important for plants that grow in your garden, that grow in our fields, and that grow in our forests. So over many years, decades, scientists have been returning to measure uh, individual plots of forest in California and other places in the western US and have seen increases in mortality of trees. Over about a single generation, a human generation, we've seen a doubling in tree mortality uh, as a consequence of warming temperatures and this increased summer water stress. And what we've, what we've uh, been looking at here is background mortality. So this is just simply sort of the year by year turnover of trees in a forest that's been increasing. But at the same time, we also have seen that warming temperatures and increased drought stress also increase the rate or the extent to which uh, insect outbreaks like bark beetles, shown in this upper panel photo here, have killed patches of forest. And also, warming temperatures increase the frequency uh, and um, intensity of large wildfires. So while this all sounds pretty dire, uh, luckily, the death of trees does not mean the end of forests. But it does mean that we can anticipate quite a few changes uh, moving forward. So one of the big, one, one of the answers, uh, I guess, to that original question uh, regarding whether all the forests will die is that many tree species will not grow where they grow today. This is a change that uh, we know to be with uh, a good amount of certainty. So the example I'm showing here is for a species called blue oak, which is widespread in California. It forms a bathtub ring around the Central Valley. And it's endemic to our state, meaning it grows nowhere else on Earth. When we uh, used some climate change scenarios to anticipate where the climate suitable for blue oak will be in the future, we see pretty dramatic shifts. In the light green colors, what I'm showing are areas where this habitat that's suitable for blue oak is eliminated in a future climate, warmer climate. And in the dark green areas is where I'm showing newly suitable habitat or habitat that remains suitable over the coming 100 years. And so what you can see is that there's a large amount of area that's been eliminated from the, the current range of this species. And then there are areas higher in elevation and to the north in California that will be suitable in the future. So we've made these kinds of predictions. Myself and other scientists have put together these kinds of projections for many, many species. And they all paint the same picture, which is that species will need to re relocate to stay within their climate zone. So 
Another question that I've been pursuing uh, recently is trying to address this question of whether alpine tree line will move up slope with climate change. So the uppermost elevation limit of forests tends to be where the temperatures in the summertime are around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And so we expect that with warming, trees will shift upslope to take advantage of the warmer temperatures, displacing the wildflowers that are currently growing in these alpine areas in the summer. To learn more about whether these trees will establish in the alpine habitat, we're using heaters suspended from these poles here to actually physically warm seedlings that are sown in plots, in garden plots, in, in the alpine tundra. And what we're finding is that water stress, as I mentioned earlier, is even uh, a, a factor here for trees establishing at the coldest edge of their range. And so, uh, in fact, what we found is that while the warming, the heating that we're doing uh, alleviates the stress that comes from cold and frost, it actually exacerbates the stress that comes from drier soils. And as a consequence, the seedlings in the warmed plots don't really do any better than the seedlings in the unwarmed plots in terms of their growth and survival. This is something that we weren't expecting given our understanding of what controls this cold edge limit of forests. More importantly, however, though, this in, than this interplay between temperature and moisture is the fact that to, uh, for seeds to arrive in an alpine environment like this and grow up into a forest takes hundreds of years. And so while mortality, a, a big mortality event might kill off a patch of forest in as, as few as five or 10 years, for example, as a consequence of an, a big insect outbreak or a large forest fire, it will take hundreds of years for that forest to regrow or for forest to establish up at higher elevations like in this uh, alpine site. So another effect of climate change on forests is that future forests will function differently than today's forest. And by function, what I mean is uh, so the cycles of water, carbon, and nutrients in the forest uh, will, will happen uh, somewhat differently. And we know less about um, how these changes will take place than we know about where species are likely to move to. So a reason we care a lot about how forests will function differently is because forests exchange vast amounts of carbon dioxide with the atmosphere each year. And in particular, tropical forests, like I'm showing here, take up about a third of the carbon pollution that we emit each year. And so understanding how uh, these forests will continue to take this carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere is critically important for projections of future climate. But we have a really big challenge, and that is that tropical forests in particular are extremely diverse. You can have thousands of species in, an in, in any given forest in the tropics, and the models that we have today that model forest function on a global scale really don't account for that diversity at all, in fact. And this is a problem because without accounting for that diversity, we're not accounting for how different tree species might respond differently to climate, enabling a forest to be more resilient than we might think it is. And so a, one approach that scientists are beginning to use, including at Berkeley Labs, is to take advantage of what we know, the characteristic, what we know about the characters or traits of species that enable them to survive or even thrive in different environments. So a trait might be how fast a tree grows. Some trees grow fast while others grow slowly. Some trees require a lot of nutrients while others can get by on infertile soils. These traits also have trade-offs. And so for example, a fast growing tree typically requires a lot of nutrients. So a large uh, init new initiative led by scientists at Berkeley Lab is taking up this challenge of modeling the change in carbon functioning of tropical forests by using this trait-based or trait-enabled uh, approach to predicting the future of climate change, excuse me, of carbon cycle change in these forests under climate change. 
So unfortunately, I don't have an answer for you tonight. Um, really just a, a, an ongoing question and research area that we're pursuing. So finally, I wanted to mention uh, the fact that I care a lot about how forests change, in part because forests affect how the climate will change. So as I mentioned previously, forests absorb and re-release vast amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere each year. And in fact, um, about a half of the emissions of carbon dioxide from humans, carbon pollution, um, is taken up by these forests each year. But at the same time, deforestation and forest degradation contributes about a third of our total carbon pollution. So these forests are very dynamically involved in the carbon cycle globally, and the amount of carbon that remains in the atmosphere is what influences and is continuing to influence our climate over time. So we're studying uh, how climate change will alter these forests, but also how these forests uh, affect the climate system by excuse me, by uh, taking up carbon through photosynthesis, by storing it away for decades or centuries in wood and soils, and, how, and releasing it back to the atmosphere through the uh, decay of uh, leaves and roots and wood. Another way in which uh, forests affect the climate system is through their effects on energy and water budgets at the Earth's surface. So forests tend to be darker than other ecosystems. You can actually see this effect from an airplane window. And this means that they absorb more of the solar radiation coming in at the Earth's surface. And this tends to warm the local area uh, relative to an, in a more uh, reflective ecosystem. In addition, forests have a lot of leaves and they have very deep roots. And this means that they can effectively move water from soils into the atmosphere. And this actually tends to cool the local climate because it's like uh, water evaporating off of your skin. It has a cooling effect on the temperature. So the ecosystem shifts or the forest shifts that I spoke about earlier actually have the potential to affect the climate locally where we live. We used a climate model to anticipate how a change in vegetation that comes from a change in climate contributes to local climate change that we would feel here in California. And what we found is that these shifting ecosystems can have a very large effect, uh, amplifying the original climate change or dampening it. In this image here, the darker colors show where that effect of the vegetation change is as large as the effect of the original climate change. So in the dark red colors, the climate change is doubled, and in the dark blue covers, uh, colors, it's completely eliminated. And so what you can see here, um, when we add it all up, was that the climate change that comes from vegetation change can account for up to 70% of the total change. So this is a, what we call a feedback effect from changing vegetation and climate together. So forests play critical roles in the global carbon cycle. They provide habitat and resources for animals. They affect our local climate. And they also, of course, provide economic and cultural resources to all of us. So I think that it's uh, important to uh, continue to study the ways in which uh, climate change will affect these forests and the way in which forests affect the climate in order to better predict the future of both. Thank you very much.